Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate. Okay, we're going to get started on the inside and I have decided I am going to add pockets to each one of the uh, four flaps that fall down and these are going to be three and a half by six three and a half by seven and a half so three and a half inches tall seven and a half inches of, uh, wide and you're going to score a half inch on uh, three of the four sides and I'm going to install the pocket so that whatever's in it is going to be forced down when it's in the closed position so they'll all be on the bottom here now if you did not add a piece of paper to cover the chipboard here I highly recommend that you do because if you don't um, when you go to put something in the pocket it's going to catch on this hinge here and if you have added this piece of paper it's just going to help whatever you're putting in the pocket travel smoothly to the bottom of the pocket okay all right with that let's go ahead and get started <clears throat> now the last thing i want to tell you is as we're installing these i want you to dry fit it hold it up and get an idea of where it's going to land you don't want to have it interfere with your hinge here so make sure that you're far enough away from the hinge that it will go in the up position without um, catching on the hinge area of the um, panel I, my dog's crying about something. I don't know what. I'm going to have to go check on her. She's been extra fussy today. So every time I sit down, she's demanding that I get up and do something for her. They're just like kids. Just like kids. When you get on the phone, they all have something to say to you. Okay. Now earlier, and of course we're going to repeat this four times. Earlier I had cut these pieces out to cover the panels. So now what I'm going to do is just slice it so that I can cover this panel and then what remains will go up here. So it's still going to be, have the same look. Um, I'll just need to cut the designer paper so that it's covering these two areas independently. I'll be right back. Okay. I solved the problem. She, uh, had gotten her ball into a spot she couldn't get it out of so it was a crisis <laughs> so that hopefully she'll be happy for a few minutes we can uh, get a couple more of these laid down and then get started decorating well the next thing I want to do is install the pockets and I said in the last video um, I'm doing this differently I normally decorate and then install in the book I'm doing this differently um, because there's so many pages to keep track of. I'm afraid I'm going to mix up the order and get them installed into the book in an order that I'm not happy with. So that is my thought process here. The other reason you want to dry fit these um, is to make sure that um, it's not going to be wider than your panel that you're applying it to. So... So the way I do this, everybody's got their own techniques, but the way I do it is I will score two of the three sides. I'm going to fold this in, then I lay it into my scoreboard and score the second half. Because when you turn it under, it actually consumes part of um, the paper. So I score half inch, fold it under, and then score it at six and a half. Then I just finish folding and taping everything up. I didn't dry fit this because I did that um, actually off screen. I dry fit all four of these before I got started. Well, she's back. We'll see what she needs now. Okay, and then we've got our last one. And this will be fun to have. There's always little memorabilia that you're probably going to want to keep from the first year um, and you can put them in the pockets or you can put them in these pockets on the side. A lock of hair, um, the height weight papers that you get from the doctor's office. I guess height weight length is what they, ah, that, that grabbed before I was ready.
Okay, so we've got those in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is trim these papers out to fit. <laughs> I think you're okay, Manola. So this is three inches, so I'm going to trim out two and seven eighths to go here. Two and seven eighths. There we go. So I went back and forth about orientation. What I decided to do, oh, I probably did that wrong. Oh, I did. Okay, so that was dumb. Um, I might be able to recover. We'll see. So to, this is going to be the front of the book, and the, the pages are going to cascade away. And what I was starting to say um, and interrupted myself is I wanted to trim the papers out in the orientation where if this is the front, I could still read um, the papers that had words on them. And I'm, I'm going to see if I've got another piece of paper I can replace that with because it really needs to go this way. And of course, depending on the pattern that you use, uh, it might be a universal pattern where it doesn't matter, but these both have words and then these two don't. So these ones are a little easier. <clears throat> doesn't matter which way you go. Paper bent in my trimmer. I marred it. We'll see. Okay, now I'm going to look at this and see if we can live with. Oh, yeah, this is going to work out fine. Yep. Okay, so I'm fine because I just put it on the bottom one down here. So we're all good. So Again, it's in the orientation of how I'm going to open the book. So, um, you know, if you turn the book around, it might look upside down, but you have to make a choice on which way you think is the uh, front. Try to fit this, make sure everything looks good. It actually... Looks great. Okay, that looks great. And then I've got um, a lot of these little cut aparts um, that we can stash in the pockets and even some uh, card toppers. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this around.
I got it in and then pull it out. There we go. It's okay, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what I didn't do on the other two is leave my leading edge, the edge that's going inside the pocket without glue. I think that's partly why I was having so much trouble. So leave about a, I don't know, quarter inch, half inch without glue on it. it. Makes it easier to slide it into the pocket. And then if you do have to back it out, you won't leave a trail of glue. Mm. I know. You're talkative today. What can I do for you? Huh? What do you need? Okay, I'm gonna finish one more pocket and then um, I'll come help you figure out what you need. Are you hungry? Okay, it's coming together, guys. I'm glad I decided to do the pocket. I'm glad I had enough paper to do the pockets. Um, I think it'll make the flaps more interesting when they fall, <laughs> fall open. If there's lots of goodies inside. <clears throat> Not positive, but I am pretty sure that all of these came from 12 by 12. It had to be 12 by 12 or the A4. And just looking at the flip side, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the 12 by 12. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, I'm gonna go see what Nala's after. She has this thing when she wants attention where she'll put her ball where she can't get it and then she'll beg somebody to come get it out for her. And I think she's just in one of those modes, which means I may not get back to this for, for a little while. So the next thing we're gonna do um, is add our pages. And uh, these pages are, and I talk about this twice in the video, in each of the videos, they are six and three quarters by six. On the six and three quarters side, you're gonna score a half inch, and then you're gonna join two of these together to make a pocket page. And it's gonna go in like this. So the six and a quarter is gonna run along the bottom, and it's six inches tall. And I'm gonna install one of these, and then I'm gonna do the other 11 offline, because I don't think you need to see me install all of them. Now, when I cut the um, the hinge, I don't know what I was thinking, but I cut it considerably smaller than it needs to be, and and that's fine. It just makes these slipping slipping these over the hinge that much easier. But it does mean because you've got this play in the pocket itself that you have to be uh, thoughtful about where it's landing uh, inside the book. So you're going to have to work a little harder to get the pocket centered. When I what I normally do is I make my hinge it's one eighth inch narrower than the pocket, so pretty much when you slip this on, it can't move left to right. Um, I didn't do that, and I don't even know why. I just messed up my measurement probably. So you just have to be mindful as you're laying these in that the, these um, pages can move left to right, and you just want to make sure it's centered on your book, and that for each subsequent uh, page, it's lined up with the one ahead of it. Hopefully that makes sense. And this is not difficult, but it is tedious. And because we have 12 of these, it could take some effort, uh, some time. So if you're, you know, kind of done crafting for the day, don't attempt this. Take, come back and do it um, 
later when you feel like you have the patience for it. Okay, so what I'm doing is pulling out the tape backing while holding it in place because I don't want it to move left to right. Um, and I'm double checking that it's yeah, centered. <clears throat> and then I'll press it into place. And once you have one side down, it's very easy to, I can't seem to get a hold of it, <laughs> do the, the back side. There we go. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to fold it forward. We'll pull the tape backing out, and then we'll move on to the next one. And then we're going to do this uh, 11 more times. Okay, there's page one. Okay, so I'm going to do that 11 more times. I'm not going to do it on film. Um, it, like I said, it is tedious, so if you're a little bit tired, um, you might want to consider coming back at this when you, uh, have a little more patience. Okay, and then here's the next one. We're just going to keep repeating all the way until we finish, and then we'll decorate. Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are still working on my first year, um, which is a Chow Bella collection and I'm going to work on, I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate the inserts first and then get the inserts in the order that I want. And then I'm going to cover the pocket page in a coordinating pattern. So I'm using the eight by eight, sorry, six by six collection pack to cover these. And, um, these are bifolds. So they're going to insert into the pockets, um, inside the album. Now, I didn't have 12 by 12 paper, but if you do, it's going to be 6 by 12 scored in half. And if you don't, then what you need to do is cut one 6 by 6, and the other piece is 6 and a half by 6. And then I just created a little hinge here to join the two pieces so that I've got basically what turns out to be a 12 by 6 um, by joining the two pieces together. Okay, so what I decided I'm going to do is when you go through the collection, there's um, there's two of everything in the 6x6 collection pack. And I'm going to do the front and the inside with the, with the flip side. So I want to feature um, these strong patterns on the outside and then this, which is a little easier to place a photo on top on the inside. <clears throat> And I'm going to go through and cover all 12. And then <clears throat> when I'm done with that, I've got this additional stack of papers to go and add um, to the top and back of these by folds. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. And I'm not really worried about the sequence of these right now. I'm just going to cover them and then get them in the order that I want. Um, after they're covered. And then once I know what that order is, then it'll be easy for me to um, pick the coordinating pattern for the pocket uh, page, covering the pocket page. Okay, so there's the front, and then we're going to open it up, and on the inside, it's going to be the flip side of this. Okay. Now you can leave the top blank or you can add some coordinating card stock. There is, I, I used um, the 12 by 12 collection pack, one, two, the A4, and then a, um, the six by six. So if you buy that set of papers, there's definitely gonna be enough to cover this and this. So this will be completely covered. But right now I'm just gonna focus on covering these two pieces and then come back and pick coordinating papers out of this stack. Okay. <clears throat> I deliberately kept these 
very simple because it is a six by six. Um, you really, if you try to add any flaps or anything, they just get so small that you're having to crop away too much of your photo. So that's why I left these pretty, pretty simple. <clears throat> that and that the fact that there's 12. So, I mean, one of the ways that you get so much photo space in an eight by eight album with four pocket pages is because I'm adding all those flaps, which is essentially like adding pages. So the one thing I found out when I opened the six by six pack is um, the six by six is actually just shy of six by six by six. It's actually six or uh, five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So you don't have to trim these down at all. They fit perfectly matted on a six by six um, panel. <clears throat> <clears throat> this one would be great for like your first picnic, first barbecue. That's what it makes me think of. Or you could do something in the fall because of the apples. So um, if you're new to the channel, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how uh, we organize. We organize our projects. Oh, I was supposed to do the other side. It needs to go down like this. Ugh, that's disappointing. Um, it's because I wasn't focused. I'm going to let the glue dry, and if it dries uh, clear enough, I might try to salvage this. Um, but I may just have to come back with another piece of paper, and I have paper to cover it. That was just a dumb mistake. <clears throat> so I'm going to set that one aside because I know I have to do something to the inside. Um, <clears throat> back to how we how we organize. Um, we uh, have what's called a playlist. And if you go to the playlist, it's usually titled, not usually, it's always titled by the paper collection that's featured in the project. So in this case, it's going to be my first year. If you select that playlist and show all uh, everything in the playlist, in all of the tutorials associated with that project will be nested under that playlist. So the first one will be the base album build, and then um, the subsequent videos are um, adding um, anything that's unique to the project and the designer paper, which is unique to the project. And then within the video, if you click on the show more description underneath um, the video box, there's a show more in the description. You'll find the cut list and you'll also find um, a material list. So you'll know what, how much paper and what papers I used in, um, in the project. <clears throat> See, I, like here's bedtime. It, they were, it's very cute. It's a very cute collection. I'm, I'm opening each one of these because I want to make sure I'm putting the papers on right side up.
did it again. I did it again. Okay, that's that's two. <laughs> dum dum. This is supposed to be the upside. Hopefully my glue will dry clear enough that I can still salvage it. Okay. <clears throat> How cute that is. Super cute. <clears throat> and I can see on the blue one, the glue has dried and I'm not going to be able to salvage it. You can see the lines everywhere um, because it's so pale. The other one, um, the, the pattern is, is going to, I think, mask a good portion of it. We'll see after it completely dries. Okay, Daphne, put it down the right way. Pay attention. Very unusual to have. Uh, I've not done a 12 page album of anything. So, this is a big book. So, when you think about it, you've got the front and back of the pocket page. So, that's 24 spaces for photos. And then with this, you've got um, how many do you have? You have 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 times 4, 48 uh, photos uh, just on the inserts. 48 plus 24. So that's a lot of photos. And or journaling space, both. <clears throat> so these next ones are a little bit simpler. Um, and that's why I want to go through and put the um, the inserts in a sequence so that the ones that have the animals and the strong patterns are interlaced with um, what are more just sort of a pattern um, and less of an image. And as you're going through, I think it'll just make it a little more interesting. <clears throat> So much glue on my hands now. Now, because I have the A4 pack, all of these cut aparts I already have in a slightly, uh, well, not slightly, a larger format, probably 20% larger. So I'll use these as embellishment rather than these. <clears throat> and I don't like this as a base, so I'm not gonna use this on the inside. I'll find another coordinating piece of paper to go here. And I'm gonna come back to, it's still not quite dry. 
but I do think I'm going to be able to use that uh, checkered pattern. It was dark enough that it's uh, the glue doesn't really show. Okay, so we'll we'll need to do something on the inside of that one. This is what goes on the inside here. I don't think I'm going to use this. I think I'm going to introduce a new pattern. And, and here's why. Um, I'm going to trim out a piece of paper real quick. Let's see. I'm going to trim out a 4 by 6 which is the most common size photo. So you know this is only 6 inches across, so you would you'd have to, to crop down your photo slightly. But if you try to put a four by six photo here, it doesn't look very good. Um, sometimes you can layer on top of these, but see, there's a four by four. Even even with a four by four, it doesn't look quite right. So I think that just covers up too much of the image. So I'm going to go with an alternate pattern there. What I don't know yet. So that one's going to need something on the inside, and then this one. Looks like it's going to be fine inside and out. it again I almost put the glue on the wrong side okay so that one's done now let me count my papers one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and apparently I have one extra. <laughs> um, okay, so we need an alternate for that, an alternate for this one, this one, and then uh, the giraffe. I think I'm going to be able to use this. Let me see if it's dry. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> The one thing I really, well, I like a lot of things about art glitter glue, but one of the things that um, really, it takes very little, um, but the other thing I like, it dries fast, which can be a blessing or a curse, and um, it dries clear and matte. A lot of glues claim to dry clear, and they do, but they're glossy. Um, and this dries matte, so you can recover from mistakes like that. So there we go. I'm going to leave this sort of tented open because I just want to make sure that glue is completely dry and not tacky. Okay, I'm going to set aside these finished ones. I'm going to look at these and try to figure out what I'm going to do on the inside. So now I have this other stack of papers that came from the 12 by 12 and the uh, A4. So Basically, I'm going to pull a sheet in here. Basically, you have a, a 12 by 12, and we've got um, a six and a quarter inch pocket. So that means I needed to cut this at six and one eighth, and, um, and then five and seven eighths uh, uh, in height. So what happens is you wind up with some leftover papers that can be used on the inside on the six by six panels because they really need to be five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I would cut into a paper and demonstrate it, but I think I'm gonna need those papers so I'm afraid to cut into them. Okay, so let's look. What's gonna look good with the elephant? I think the elephant was supposed to be 
bubbles. So let's see if we've got some bubbles. And yes, we do. We've got quite a few bubbles. We've got at least two. So I'm going to use one of the bubbles. Even though it's not the right scale, it's still going to work. I'm still happy with it. So let's try yellow. No. Okay, I'm gonna go with this green. <clears throat> I think I actually like this better, so I'm going to turn this down. Yep, I think that looks nice. The cut aparts on the 12 by 12 collection pack are just too large to use. The scale's too large to use in this project. So you can definitely utilize the pattern on the flip side, which is what I've done. And then I preserve some of the smaller A4 and 6 by 6 cut aparts, which fit into the project better. There we go. All right. So now we've got. Um, Basically everything has sort of an A, the A sides are covered. So now we can look to cover the other two panels. But first, I'm gonna take all my papers. These are the choices we'll have to cover the other sides and there's plenty. As I had mentioned, I'm going to put them in the order that I want them in the book. <clears throat> So you see you have these sort of pat just patterns only, and then you have these very strong images. And I just want to um, interleaf them so you get a little variety as you're flipping through the book. Okay. So that's bedtime, that's birthday. This is sort of height and weight bath. I think 
I want bedtime to be last. So here's what I have so far. I need to cut my glue that's drying out on me. <clears throat> so this is the order I'm thinking. Okay, so now I want to interleaf these. Where would I put? And then we still have this. So I think I, this would go here. Height, weight. My weight, my height, bedtime. This is like bath time. and party. So I need one, two, three, one, two, three. So It's, I've got an even number of patterns and an odd number of, of these images. That's why I'm struggling a little bit with this, with the sequence. <clears throat> I think I'm liking that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my box in, and we're going to start putting in the cards, and then I want to see what they look like as they cascade. And I'll worry about adding the additional paper after I get the sequence the way I want it. Wow, that didn't want to flow. I don't know why it's so tight. I think it's getting hung up on something. It's okay, I guess. I made the pockets a quarter inch wider than the inserts because I know as you put the paper and photos on it, it starts to open the pocket up and make it smaller. Um, so we should have plenty of plenty of room. <clears throat>
Okay, so there, there it is. So I just want to take a look at how it's cascading and if I'm kind of happy with the, the intermingle of colors. And I think I am. So the next thing I want to do, um, the last thing I'm going to do is pull the inserts out and cover the other two sides. The next thing I want to do is start to um, decide the front and back of each one of the pocket pages. And I am going to um, organize this, and then when I come back, it'll be in the sequence that I want to lay it down in. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I did a couple things. One, I had these cut apart, so I went ahead and trimmed them out, and I've got something in each one of the pockets. They're not cardstock backed yet, but I'm gonna, I plan to do that, but I may not bother you with that actual installation. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I've matched the patterns to the pages that I want, so I'm going to start laying those in. Uh, this from 12 by 12 collection is pretty obvious when you see the flip side. <laughs> Knowledge just came trotting in here to show me something. Okay, and you know, I mentioned before that I went ahead and put the pages in and I'm decorating in the book. I don't normally do it that way, but I just felt like 12 pages were going to be just too much for me to keep track of and I'd get them out of order one way or another. Okay, and I'm going to add this one. <clears throat> So we are pretty much wrapping up on this project. This is a fun project. It's a very easy project. The hard part is building the box. Um, the, the rest of this is very straightforward. So this would be actually a very good beginner project if you've not built an album before. It has all the elements of an album. Um, you've got your hidden hinge, you've got uh, basically a cover and and uh, pocket pages so and then it's just simple because there's not a whole lot of moving mechanisms on the pages but again I kept it that way deliberately because uh, the size of the pocket page and also the number of pages you you've got plenty of surface area for photos And I'm trying to keep the cover of the pocket page simple um, so that you can place a photo there or you can add some additional embellishments, which I think I would um, wind up doing a little bit of both, um, putting a photo here, but also, oh, I got a drop of glue there. Um, I think I'm going to add some cut aparts. <clears throat> That's too small. Hmm, that got mixed in. That's strange. I don't know how I did that. Okay. 
Okay, I need another green something. I think I'll use, is this big enough? Nope, that's too small. That was in the wrong pack again, pile. That'll work. I'm trying to pick something that'll go with this as well. I don't really like the way those go together. It's okay. I can live with it. A couple of these that I didn't have uh, trimmed down quite right, I think. There we go. We're coming toward the end. Okay, so I am gonna go back and add paper to the inserts, but I don't think I'm gonna do that on camera. I think you guys can coordinate your papers on your own, and uh, then I can get this video out a little bit faster. Um, I don't. Typically, um, what I find uh, is uh, you guys watch the, the first parts of the videos, um, and then toward the end, you sort of drop off because it's really about just adding the designer paper. And once you see it, you know what to do. You don't have to necessarily watch me put glue on it. Um, 
and lay it down. So I will take each one of the inserts out during the walkthrough and show you the outside and inside. If you want to do it the way I do it, you'll have to look at the, um, the walkthrough to uh, line your papers up. And you may want to change the sequence of the inserts. Um, this is the way I like it, but um, you may want to change it. It's all about preference. Okay, so this page is going to be blue front and back. And when I selected the papers, what I what I do is I'm looking at, you know, when they're open um, away from each other like this, does it coordinate reasonably? And really, any paper with any paper in this collection works. It's just the nature of the colors. Um, but I, I that's what I'm looking for. So uh, as you look to build yours, um, if you don't want to do it exactly like this, that's just one of the design considerations. And the other thing I did is I designed it so that you're flipping the pages toward you instead of like a book. Um, but if you want to change the orientation, you can. Um, I just prefer this. I think it, it almost feels like a file folio uh, with this number of pages that we have. Now, I don't like these two across from each other, so I am going to change that. Stripe on stripe is too much. I like that better. do we haven't used this pattern anywhere let's do this so that'll be my last page
Okay, that's the last one. I'm going to um, cardstock back this. I may make it into a card um, after I get done cutting apart the elements that I want to embellish the pages on. Uh, so I'm going to add little features, um, like I might have a little card and another cut apart here. So once I go through and, and get all the cut aparts and tags that I want pulled out, if I've got enough paper to make these into cards um, that bifold, I will um, dress those as well. And you'll see that in the walkthrough. And again, I am going to cover the rest of the inserts, but I'm going to do it offline. Um, I think it's absolutely necessary on the on the back side because I just I don't like that look at all. So I'd like to see some patterns sticking out just like we do have on this side. So I will do that and again I'll go over that in detail in the walkthrough but for now as far as the construction of the album we're done. Um, that's it. I'm gonna pull the lid in and show that to you one more time and then I'm gonna go offline finish dressing this the next time we get together, it will be to work on the, uh, the walkthrough. Oops, I got my shirt stuck in there. It's a little, little hard to, to manage, but you can do it. So I think it's turned out really, really well. Um, it's, it's a fun project. I think, uh, I think you guys are going to like it. Okay, next time we get back, it'll be the walkthrough.